Yo, what's going on guys? It's Eric. Welcome to the video. Um, I got a video or uh, I had somebody that had, had a question about a video or just a question about starting to, getting into trucking and um, he wants to do it as run it like a business and hire a driver right away and without having his own CDL. So, um, and I'm assuming that once he kind of learns and sees what the money is like, then he might end up quitting his job and doing it. That's kind of what I'm reading between the lines of the message, but I'm not sure. So I would encourage uh, the guy that reached out to me that he should get his CDL. I have I did a video on it. I mean, it you know I just don't know enough about the guy to really to comment on that. But I think it's good to have your CDL to work towards it and to get it. So I'll just say that. So the first there's a, he this is a super long question, lots of different questions in it. A lot I'm gonna refer you to. Um, a guy on YouTube that you should talk to that does tanker work is Dirt Broke. I'll put his link to his channel in the description because a lot of the, your questions have to do with the type of trucking that I don't know a lot about, but I do, I think I can at, at least give you some places to start. So the first one is Will fuel carriers let me lease on and put? A driver in a truck even if I don't have a license and the the short answer to that is yes but um, it's I don't know I mean you're, you're gonna definitely have to talk to like more than one carrier to find someone that's gonna allow you to do that and there's it's um, it's a case-by-case -case basis I would say and it's not I would guess that it's not normal, but it's definitely doable. Um, I know that it's doable because I know people that do it. I have uh, a really good friend of mine that hauls sand and gravel with me. And then when it slows down, his boss um, actually is leased on to one, the biggest fuel carrier. They don't own any gas stations or anything, or but... They're the biggest fuel carrier in our area, in the in Minis in the metro area, and so his boss has like three or four, two or three trucks that work at this tanker company, and then in the summertime, he hauls sand and gravel with me. So he has two trucks that run their own authority. My friend's boss does, and he runs one of those truck, one of those two trucks hauling end them. And then when things slow down, his boss will get out of his truck and then let the other guy take his position as a tanker guy. And then he runs regional and he actually does hazmat. Well, I guess it is. At most tank, most fuel is hazmat, but he does chemical stuff. I don't know what he does. So it's definitely doable, but like I also know that my, my friend Adam called one company the same company and they said at this time we're not taking on any fleet owners that have drivers so they they'll do it it's just you got to hit them at the right time it's in every market is definitely going to be different and i don't know what your market's like and if adam called you know other companies somebody would have let them do it you know whether it was propane or fuel or whatever but he just called one company they said no and he said ah whatever i got other stuff i can do so so that question again that i just answered was will fuel carriers let me lease on and put a driver in a truck not having my own authority or not having my own um cdl the answer is yes it's going to be hard and having your CDL, I don't know if that would help or not. Um, it probably would help if you had it. But Okay, so the next part of the um, video is going to be, can I make a profit? Yes, you. I, if they let you get in, 
Yes. Wait, hold on a second. I want to make sure. So I think it was, can I make a profit and still pay the driver a decent wage? So here's what I say. Yes, I think you can. Um, I mean, if they let you in and you have a good driver, he is a good driver, you're going to pay, if you're get, if he's getting paid percentage, I pay uh, my driver's percentage because it incentivizes them and um, it's not to, sometimes people pay percentage because it doesn't pay enough. So you can't pay somebody hourly. So then their hourly wage, if they figured it out, was like super low because they work like super long hours. But then they're only making like, you know, like 20 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour, or even worse because they, they're working such a long day. But I don't do it because of that. I just do it because that's just how I do it. But you, so if you get good drivers... You should be able to, um, if you get in there, you should be able, I mean, yes, you, you can make a profit. I mean, it might not be your first year. It might be your second year. It might be your third year. You shouldn't like, you shouldn't lose money though. In my opinion, over a three year period of time, you should be up, you know, it should be setting you up. Um, and then one of the things that I did respond back to was basically saying that I think it's a great idea it's not a get rich quick idea but it's a way to make passive income income without you technically you have to do the labor for it and you know even if you're only making what if you only made a hundred dollars a week off of that so that would be $400 a month. Is that a good deal? If if after all your expenses are paid, you make $400 a month times 10 months, it's 4,000 times, well, plus an extra 800, so you'd be at 4,800 bucks, right? Well, I guess it, it would just depend on how much money you actually put into it and what you could get back for interest on that. I think it's called a cash on cash return in real estate, but, um, the numbers are probably going to make sense. I would recommend doing it. Trucking has changed my family's life, um, in a very good way. And it's just a start and you never know where it could lead from there. So that's all I'll say there. Third question is truck type. And I talk about this all the time. I think I even talk about it in the video, but you just kind of want some reassurance on the truck type. So backstory, the guy talked to a tanker company driver and the guy said, day cab, day cab, day cab. That's what you need is a day cab. From a company perspective, like there could be, like if you call somebody and you tell them, if you call a carrier and you say, hey, I've got a, a sleeper truck, they might say, well, you can only have a day cab. More than likely, I mean, that's, I mean, I could see that being an issue, but I'm not sure. But what I would recommend is don't buy a truck based off of what one company wants. You don't want to fit into one company's box. You want to be marketable to anyone and everyone as much as you possibly can. So that's, so what I'm gonna tell you is in general for trucking and being local, what is the best situation for you to, for, for me to do? And so I don't know if it would be for you, but for me, the best situation is to have a 32 inch sleeper, low top or mid roof sleeper, 40, if you know for sure that you're gonna go out like a couple times a week but if you don't really think you're ever going to go out just go with the 32 inch low top or mid roof sleeper with a setback axle and it would be a plus to get a big window in the back of it but it's not necessary it's not necessary it would just be nice but more than likely it's not going to have it unless you put it in or you buy a pretty customized truck um 
So that the question that I just answered was basically, what's the type of truck you which would you want to get? And they wanted to know if they should get a, or they the the driver basically said you want a tank, you want a day cab. I disagree with what the driver's saying, but I understand what the driver's saying. So, but as far as an owner and being marketable to multiple industries and and not boxing yourself in, I believe that you should get that you you know a 32 inch to a 40 inch sleeper mid roof to the low top would be the way to go with a setback axle you're still going to be able to turn just fine um what's this and then the fourth thing he said was is i'm thinking about doing the leasing on with a tanker otherwise i might do port or go from california to arizona he lives or i don't know if he's going to run out of california so you know i don't know the port i i mean that's basically hauling um from what i know about the port that's basically hauling containers i've said it a thousand times but there's usually money in everything but it seems really hard to find the money in the port it seems like more people fail at finding good money in the port but they're but it's got to be out there. I know that for sure. So if you're willing to stay in the game to figure out how to make the money in the port, then then uh, I think it's a good... I mean, anything that you can do to get started is, is, a, is good and it's going to get you in the right direction. And I think if you do the port or if you do California, Arizona, I mean, maybe plan on doing all of it. You know, try one thing out try something else out try the other thing out maybe start with the port maybe then do uh find good loads once every couple weeks to california arizona um and then once you get get going with that maybe after you got some experience with running the truck running the employee then maybe talk to the fuel carriers in the area and see if you can get on with them i feel like the easiest thing for you to to do as a business owner would be to lease on to a fuel carrier and then have their dispatches deal with your driver i mean that would be the the easiest thing for me i don't do that at all i i don't lease on with anybody i run my own authority and i find my own work and it's very um you know there's a lot that goes into it but it's very stressful because, you know, if you screw something up, you might never hear from a client that, you know, a, a really good client or whatever. It's just more stressful, I feel like, but th the reward is there as well. But when I started, I didn't start out doing what I'm doing now. So it's just getting getting the ball rolling and, and uh, you know, just kind of taking it from there. And I'd love for anybody that kind of knows about this topic to reach out to this guy hopefully he'll he'll reply in the in the comments and then you guys can talk to him for sure you got it the talk with dirt broke but anybody else that may know about any of these industries and maybe guys that it, that uh you know basically what we're doing here and what i like about the guy's question is we're talking about trucking as a business and not as somebody that's trying it's just so weird how the trucking industry doesn't view the trucking industry as a business but it's a huge business and it's it's a it's a great industry so all right thanks a lot guys peace